as somebody who has been responsible for the security for people around the world, voice communications, um, the last five years, I have seen what happens when private conversations fall in the wrong hands. I have seen the devastation and the pain. Princess Margaret once said, I have as much privacy as a goldfish in a bowl. And this is very much apt today. Privacy and the online privacy is something that affects everybody of us. Each of you in this room is potentially a victim of privacy invasion. What I want to speak today about is not what I do, but about privacy and our right to have privacy online. To live and operate in an interconnected internet world and not leave a digital footprint is impossible. You cannot get away from it, but you can work yourself to a better place and understand that the security and the places that you do, the things that you say on the internet can be better. To understand what privacy is, let's just look at it. It's a state of being unobserved. Changing clothes, for example, that which I keep private, I'm merely withholding from the public view. So when you get home at night, after a long day at work, you go to your room, you close your curtains. It's a sense of privacy. An immediate feeling of relaxation comes over you. You've escaped the world without guilt. You're allowed to do this. Now what happens if you didn't close your curtains and suddenly you spot someone looking into your room? What happens? Embarrassment? Fear? Anything can happen. And this is the reality. Now we're back in our room. Our curtains are closed. Our computers are on. Are you private? You're looking at a website, you're chatting to someone somewhere else. Are you private? No, you're not. And this is the problem with today's internet, is that we live in such a connected world that what we assume is private is actually not private. In my work, people called us naive. People called us crazy. And then, a couple of weeks ago, you all met Edward Snowden. So, People who live private lives understand exactly what we do. But there's a sinister side to privacy. And when privacy comes out and information that is private to you, we come to crime. Something that affects all of us. And it could be a simple thing that you don't even realize. Um, I'm fortunate that uh, I live in a game reserve. And I have friends that's in the industry, particularly in game and rhinos and so forth. And late last year, we had a fortunate event. Baby rhino was born. And it was a big event because it's the first rhino that was born in a long time on a farm. The short of the long story is someone came, took a photo and tweeted the event. There's something attached to that photo called geotags. I'm not going to carry the story, but information led and something happened. Privacy is something that you don't miss until you've lost it. Ask any A-list celebrity what's the first thing they want back after they become famous, and it's their privacy. If we understand how to fix it, we must maybe first understand how do we lose our privacy, because some of us don't even realize what we're doing. Our 15 minutes of fame, pop idols. I take a video, hey, this is what I do. And we put it on the internet, we tweeted it out, we put it on Facebook. Today, I'm in Ibiza with some of my friends, and we're doing some crazy stuff. It doesn't matter. In a couple of years from now, I'm running for an important job interview. 
That crazy video suddenly came out. Says this is not a responsible person. He can't represent our company. This is reality. This is fact. It happened all over the world. Our obsession with Facebook. There's nothing wrong with Facebook. Don't get me wrong. I'm on Facebook. You can look me out. It is what we post on Facebook. Our rants. What we say. What is going on on Facebook? It is there forever. It is your footprint. React on Facebook like you would react on public, with manners, with decency. Don't use it as an outlet for your anger, your frustration, unless you know what is going to come for it. The one thing I want to talk about is metadata. And the image that you see is a simple image of Oscars, directors and actors put together what we call open source intelligence. We take information from the industry that's open, it's public, and we make a graph, a visualization. Something that can tell me a story about you, and I will know more about you than you know about yourself in a couple of months. And this is reality. But what is metadata? It is information that you hand over that you don't even know that you hand over. Every one of us who has a mobile phone here has currently been recorded as sitting in Bryanston. Your network provider knows that you're here. Some of your GPS locations are on and can pinpoint exactly where we are. Metadata is quantified and calculated and grabbed all over the world. And it builds a picture and a story of what we are. The problem with metadata is information about me and you collected in the name of law enforcement by private companies, and private companies and government have become punch drunk on this information. It's the new oil. Data and data mining is a new oil. That's Facebook connections around the world, a simple graph of telling us how you connect. It's a powerful and very beautiful picture but it's powerful, tells us. And that's just a very, very basic story. The story about Milte Spitz, a German politician two years ago who sued T-Mobile Systems and got his information. And if you want to go to zeit.de, it's, it's a website in Germany, you can actually watch the story of six months of the data from his cell phone, what he was doing, what he was saying and where it's taking us. The problem with metadata is not just contained to your phone and to your computer. It's the moment when you came through the gates at the campus, they collected some information. All this information, no matter where you are in the world, your fingerprint on a bioscanner, when you go through a doctor's appointment, the cameras in a shopping mall, all this information is collected and stored and stored and stored and stored. That's all fine and well if it's stored, but what happens if it falls in the wrong hands? What happens when someone has access to that information and want to build a case against someone? Today, I am nobody in 15 years' time I'm running for president. I have access to that information. Why is the information that I did 15 years ago going to influence my judgment in 15 years from now? and it can influence all of us. This is what I think of metadata. as a toxic nuclear waste of info. We don't need it. And if you think about it, this is real. This is serious, because each of us has a record out there from all the carrier providers that you have, no matter who they are. You have a footprint, and by time, we can build this up. There are lots of things that you can do about it, the South African government has recently announced that they will introduce an act called the Poppy Act. It's a great start, long overdue. For those of you who don't know about the Poppy Act, essentially the protection of personal information with massive fines for those who will reveal information about us. You've all heard that you've applied for something and then two days later someone calls you out of the blue, hey, I want to sell you insurance. The Poppy Act will apply to that but it does not apply to this metadata yet. 
and it needs to. It needs to go further because metadata, when it leaks out, will cause crime. What can we do about it? There is lots of tools, there's lots of software that can help you in the privacy, but ultimately, privacy online starts with you. Each and every one of you think about what you do before you post online, before you say something. If you go to a news website and you see comments at the bottom, hands up who's seen the racial slurs, the, the, the rubbish, the mudslinging going on at the bottom. It's pathetic. But why? Because people get angry and they start posting. There's a permanent record that you leave there that cannot go away. Think before you post. Think before you tweet. That's your first antidote and the first way of getting your privacy somewhat back. If you're in a public Wi-Fi spot like here, make sure you've got a VPN on. Because that's an open Wi-Fi spot. And if I had a tool on my computer, I could snoop half of your computers right now or your phones. It's a fact. There are tools out there, as I said. Use it as you can. And if you choose not to use advice from people that dispense it, don't feel alone when you're left out in the rain. Thank you.